Okay. What do we have? How do we get down there? Is there another ladder down? Somewhere? No, I don't see a ladder down. Maybe... Oh, okay. You go under. What the hell? She's down there already. You already got down there. How'd you get... <laughs> if you're down there, you might as well do it. You said Will built a countermeasure. What makes you so sure this isn't it? The time machine? He said the countermeasure was stolen. But the machine is still here. Okay. I guess fair enough. Makes sense. <clears throat> hey. It looks like I can reset the core from here. Are you sure you know what you're doing there? No clue. But I, I did help Paul set up the machine at the university. Which then caused the fracture. Look, Will knew the calculations were wrong. I'm hoping that means he knew what he was doing here. This is what Will leads us to. We have to test it. The core. That's what we set up first. Okay, so that's done. This could actually be the key to finding the countermeasure. We'll see. It's still resetting. <clears throat> the core is reset. We need to activate it from the control booth. Here it there is. Nothing. Yeah, push it forward. Yep. There we go. Turn it on. What was that? Yep. It's fine. Look at this worked. girl has no idea what's going on. It actually worked. Okay, we activate the corridor next. Okay, there's no way that thing should be exposed like that. <laughs> Here we go. in a trunk of his goddamn car. <laughs> That's my brother in a nutshell. Damn. <clears throat> that didn't sound good. Fuck. Let's just hope it still works. Set the date. Where do we do that? The other side. Yep, right here. What date are they gonna put in? Achievement! Not a friendly know. invitation. What? Who did act two? I don't know. We were so close. I'm gonna try it again. Yeah, like hell you are. You saw what happened. Something's wrong with the machine. We don't know that. You are not trained for this. Anything you do is gonna make it worse. We you can't know I'm right. Stop trying. You lost people. You're angry. I get it. But this is bigger than us. We can't fix the machine. But I might know somebody who can. Ah. Sophia Amaral. The monarch scientist. I saw her video near Ground Zero. Serene's had a Cronin research. She'll be at the Monarch Gala tonight, but security's airtight. She'll be nearly impossible to get to. Unless I have an invite. Paul told me he expected me to meet him at that party. And that's why he goes. That thing told huh. me that was not a friendly invitation. Jack, no. <laughs> ah, he gets captured. We saw this in a mural. We saw this mural. He was giving himself up. <clears throat> yep. All right, end of Act Two, which means, guess what? What the hell? 
That means we're probably gonna have another cutscene coming up here. Another one of those long, uh... <clears throat> junction 2, business personal. Ah, another junction. The future used to be so clear when I was reliving the past. Once I caught up to the moment I had left, that ended. All I've had to go on since then are the plan and the visions. I knew Jack would come to me. I'd seen that. But I didn't know why, exactly. Or how it would end. There he is. You are right. My visions of the future aren't always clear, but they <clears throat> don't lie. Speaking of lies, Joyce is saying he's discovered his brother's time machine. It's not synced, look! We've spent 17 years looking for it, and he finds it. It's not it synced properly, day. what the hell? That sounds unlikely. Still, we know it's out there somewhere, and we don't know what his brother managed to tell him. <clears throat> if he really has located the machine, why would he come here and tell you? Smart Money says he's trying to play you. Maybe, but the machine is out there. It's in our interest to find out where. How nice that the audio was not synced whatsoever. <laughs> if Jack knows, <clears throat> I have to talk to him. Dr. Okay. Joyce could have provided the answer to that question. William's attitude and knowledge made him a liability. Is that angry young man going to cooperate any more than his brother did? You remember Jack as a close friend, but that clouds your judgment. Don't make this personal. It's not. But don't forget why we're here tonight. After what happened, our people need reassurance that we're in control. You're the man who could win them over. Let me handle Joyce, so you can concentrate on your speech. I know what's at stake here, Martin. Hmm. What's this? Dr. <clears throat> Sophia Amaral had taken over our Cronon research department after Dr. Kim's accident. She was the only one who could treat the Cronon syndrome. Huh. So from Sophia Amaral, what happened to Dr. Henry Kim to Erica Cross? Erica for... for us, Shut up, I'm reading. Erica, first of all, my condolences and apologies. I, I didn't realize you had a history with Henry, and frankly, I would not have promoted you into this position had I known. If you'd be more comfortable working on something else, I can make that happen. No questions asked. To be clear, I'm not talking about a demotion. I mean a comparable senior position in another department. You're co correct in, in that it's a very sensitive topic, but given your current security clearance, I can tell you what I know. Unfortunately, I don't know much. For the past six months, I myself have been trying to work out what happened, but haven't made much progress. I know Henry was working late in the lab. There was some kind of a croton particle surge. Of course, we know that exposure to large quantities of chronon particles can result in physical changes. Paul Serene is an example of that. His first exposure resulted in his ex extraordinary abilities. Go. You should shut up. And the second exposure caused his progressive condition. In Henry's case, that exposure transformed him into a chronon disruptive wave function subject or a shifter. It is, of course, clear that Mr. Serene's and Henry's conditions are essentially the same thing, even if Mr. Serene's case hasn't progressed this far. However, it's not at all clear how Henry could have been exposed to such a powerful dose of croton particles, particularly as the lab area itself underwent none of the temporal changes we have come to associate with such an exceptional event. None of the containers on scene have remotely enough chronon particle capacity for such a high dose, and furthermore, all of them were intact and accounted for. In short, we don't know where these particles could possibly have come from. I'm not surprised that Martin Hatch was unwilling to discuss this. He was the only other person present in the lab when the accident took place, but I don't know why he was there or what happened, and he claims to have no memory of the events. Despite this, Martin somehow managed to contain Henry in the artificial zero-state field set up in the lab. I'm unwilling to speculate as to how this could possibly have happened. Suffice to say that I have many questions about these events myself. I think about my offer, Erica. You're a first-rate scientist. I would hate to lose you, but I absolutely understand if you want to change departments. Please give my best to your wife... It's lovely to meet her the other week. Hmm. Hmm. Well, that was the narrative object. The mansion was an extravagance. 
but it was useful for events like the gala, and it deflected attention from our nearby R&D facility. <laughs> okay. Let's go, Broils. Oh, sorry. You don't play that character. Let's go, Hatch. <laughs> Whoa. What are these doing here? We should be set up by now. It's all on schedule. You're micromanaging again. Hmm. <laughs> Nothing over here, but there's a car. <clears throat> Nothing in here? I went in a circle. I went in a big circle. I was supposed to go down the stairs. What's going on? He slowed down. Nothing else? No. We gotta go do this, I guess. Make a choice about Jack. Don't look like much. <laughs> left all the guys he wasted. <clears throat> That's true. He's a mass murderer. And here you are. I had to see the lifestyles of the sick and traitorous up close and personal. And it was such a nice invitation. How do you want to deal with this, Paul? Choose whether you focus on your personal business or the mission. Huh? What the fuck? What's going on? Paul, there you go. I could still try to reach Jack and make him see reason. Or I could let Hatch deal with him so nothing would distract me from leading Monarch. Let's see both options, personal or business. <clears throat> I've tried to change things. Answer me this question, Bo. I once trusted Jack more than anybody. It was my only chance to make him understand the truth. The fuck do you mean nobody got a look at the shooter? Whoa. Without me there to give the speech, my empire would start to crumble like a house of cards. Whoa. Okay, business. I believe that with hope. Miscalculation, and as you and I are well aware, Mr. George, with miscalculation can often come a catastrophe. And that leaves me with you, Mr. Joyce. Oh, shit. But my old friend would be a lost cause, dead and buried, along with the rest of my past. Tonight is a celebration, a celebration in the face of darkness. Tonight we celebrate because I promise to you that we are prepared. Monarch would grow stronger with my presence. The plan would go forward as intended. Hmm. So he's basically saying, you know, in one choice, Monarch is going to survive and do well, but Jack is going to die. In the other choice, it sounds like Monarch's going to fall apart, but Jack will live. But it's weird, because Jack's the main character, so you know he's not going to die. So I almost kind of want to do the business side, because I think he would. He would go give the speech, and then this, uh, you know, Hatch would try to kill Jack, and Jack would stop him. That's what we're going to do. Business. Achievement. come this far to get derailed now. You talk to him. I know <clears throat> what he knows. Then get rid of him. They're all heart money bags. <laughs> I know you want to make this all about you and me, Jack. But that's far away in the past now. And I have a speech to prepare for. Nice. What the hell? Oh, this is when he saw the end of time, right? I've seen where this leads. Yeah. 
I've been to the end of time, and I've escaped it all the way to 1999, when it all started. I've tried to change things, but by what trying, the? I only made them happen in the first place. Huh. So it was him who did everything wrong? Maybe. Well, look at this. Wow, so Junction 2 business, people were pretty much split down the middle. I was a 46%, so I was the, the slightly lesser agreed-to choice. Huh. But pretty much everyone was equal on this one. That's kind of interesting. Alright, let's see what happens.